All right, guys, big feelings. Mad, excited, sad, tired, nervous, relaxed. All of these big feelings you've likely seen in your toddler again and again and again some more, but do you know what to do with those feelings? Do you know how to help your toddler recognize those big feelings and then cope with them to help your toddler to develop emotional intelligence? Well, if not, stick around because we are diving into all of these big things right now. Carnahan fam. My name is Kaylee Carnahan. I'm a mother of three children at three and under. And through this whole journey, my husband and I, well, we're just focusing on being the most intentional, positive parents that we can be for our children. So in the last year, year and a half, we've taken a little bit of a shift in our focus with our children from those preschool and kindergarten readiness skills to more of emotional intelligence. Now you might be wondering what exactly is emotional intelligence. Now we are gonna get into that in just a second, but first I do wanna say thank you to our sponsors for our video today, Hobby Hobby, which is our new bilingual book resource for our children. Now a little bit later, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I loved them so much that I reached out to them to initiate this partnership. They are that good, you guys, and I just can't wait to show them to you, so stick around for that. And before I get too far into this, if you are not a part of our extended family yet, hit subscribe down here below. We have two new videos coming out twice a week. Two videos twice a week. I don't know if that's redundant, but either way, if you're trying to be a more intentional, positive parent, so are we. So you can go along the journey with us. All right. Let's dive into emotional intelligence. If you have a toddler, you've likely heard the phrase big feelings, right? Our kids have all of these big feelings inside of them. And to be honest, so do we. There are actually four different areas when we talk about emotional intelligence. We have emotions and how they relate to ourselves and emotions and how they relate to others. And then on the other side of it, there is recognition. So recognizing what is it within yourself and what does it look like with others and regulating those feelings and those emotions. Now here today, we're gonna to be focusing on self-awareness. They need to be able to be aware of those feelings and recognize those feelings within themselves before they can apply it to others or before they can know what to do with it. And as we focus on that self-awareness today, we're gonna to share five ways you can teach your baby about big feelings, teach your child about emotions, help them to become self-aware and further develop their emotional intelligence. Let's get started. All right, when we're talking about the very young child, your baby, your toddler, even your preschooler, a child's emotional intelligence starts with their relationship with you. So how do you set a solid foundation so your child is able to regulate their emotions, to recognize them within themselves, and also feel comfortable to fully feel those emotions so that they're able to thrive. We're gonna start you off today with number one, identify. Identify the feelings for them. At a young age, they are still very much developing their expressive language skills, even how to put the thoughts that they're having in their head into words to come out of their mouth. So that in itself is a very, very demanding task for a young toddler. So you're going to want to name those emotions for them. Narrate for them what you are seeing with their body as they continue to experience these same emotions and utilize the same facial expressions or body gestures. They'll begin to recognize the reaction with their body and pair it with the emotion that you've named for them. Uh, are you feeling so sad? <laughs> Yeah, look at those sad eyes. Yeah, you look like you're feeling so sad. Yeah. Is that right? Are you feeling so sad? Yeah. And now you also don't want to just focus on the negative emotions. We're not developing a negative emotional intelligence. It's emotional intelligence. So help your child to identify those positive moments as well. <laughs> One proud girl. See, as we identify what we're seeing in their body, their gestures, their facial expressions, just what their body is doing, and then we pair it with a word. We give it a name that helps your child to do the same. It helps your child to become self-aware. And in time, they will start doing that on their own. I'm angry. You're angry? Yeah. I saw that. I saw your eyebrows like this, and I saw your eyes like this. 
makes you so sad. Yeah. Can you tell me what you're feeling? Mad. You're feeling mad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going back. That's nervous. That makes you feel nervous. But this is a very specific set of vocabulary words that need to explicitly be taught to your child. Without you teaching them these words to name their emotions, the only way they will have to tell you how they're feeling is through their behavior, whether positive or negative, but either way they're gonna tell you. So you might as well give them the right vocabulary in order to identify those feelings. All right, moving on to number two, the next way to teach your baby about emotions, about big feelings and to develop their emotional intelligence is going to be to validate their feelings. Now I'm gonna tell you that this is the one that probably seems the least natural. It was for me and this, is the, this was the biggest learning curve for me. It is by far the least comfortable for the parent. So when we validate and empathize with our children, what we're actually doing is we're taking ourselves and our personal feelings out of the equation and trying to step into their shoes and see it through their lens for a second. So while they seem insignificant to us, like, why are you crying about that? Whatever that is, they don't have the developed skill set to be able to handle it, or they already would be handling it. So what we want to do is provide a safe space for them to be able to feel those things and validate them in those feelings and emotions. You felt mad that mom wasn't gonna put your underwear on for you, huh? Huh. Yeah, you wanted me to do it. Right? Huh. Yeah, I understand. You like when mom does things for you, huh? huh? Yeah, you wanted to drink that milk, huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah, you love milk. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. And you really wanted them, and you feel sad that you can't have them, huh? You want me to hold you, huh? Yeah, and you feel sad that mom's not holding you right now, huh? That makes you feel sad. Yeah, I hear you. You love to be held, huh? You love it, you love the snuggles. All right, what I did there was actually pretty simple. Identified the emotion for them. You are feeling sad. Now the rest of that was all validation. She loves to be carried, she wants to be carried, she's sad she's not being carried. I mean, all of those things, they're actually not even debatable. I mean, they're all very true for her. All right, we're moving on to the next way that you can help your baby to develop emotional intelligence, identify those big feelings, talk to them about emotions, and that is number three, model for your baby. Model for your child what identifying those feelings looks like. And here's the kicker. It's outside of the moments that are filled with intensity and all of these big feelings. And two really, really great ways to help model these things for your children is one, through play. We already know that developmentally, the young child learns best through play. You might be doing your normal, basic play. The farm animals are on the farm, or you're playing house and baby, or the cars are zooming around the town. Anything can be natural in its play, but integrate talking about emotions. Mama's car is ready to go down, but, oh no, that's a really big hill. My car's feeling kind of nervous. This, this one will help. He can come help? Yeah. Oh, that makes him feel Follow much better. Me. Follow me, he says. Oh, thank you for helping me. I don't feel so nervous anymore. Sad. Is the baby feeling sad? What could we do to help the baby feel Wait, better? She needs a bottle. Ooh, that's a good thought, buddy. <laughs> Maybe she needs a bottle. Modeling through play helps give you the chance to be able to talk about those big feelings in a really safe and relaxed environment. Your child doesn't feel the intensity of those feelings, so they're able to take it in a little bit better. Another really great way to model feelings in a way that's relaxed and super safe for your child is through books. Books are a phenomenal way of sharing about emotions, but your child being able to see the way that the characters in their books feel 
and recognize that they have felt those same things make those feelings a whole lot safer for them and even give us some more talking points around these emotions. Why are they feeling so scared? Yeah, they do look pretty scared. What is this feeling? What is he feeling? Sad. Yeah, he is feeling sad. I feel sad. Me siento triste. Me siento triste. I feel sad. Now, this is where I want to share with you a little bit more about our sponsor today. Hobby Hobby is an incredible bilingual book system. Every inch of the book is tappable. They don't have to tap the words or even the specific pictures that have labels. Anywhere on the book can be tapped. There is just so, so much to explore in these books that it really just is exciting. One of the greatest parts of Hobby Hobby is their content. So as we're talking about feelings, we love the book of feelings naturally. And then everything from like positive body image and adoption and inclusion and global celebrations. It's like, whoa, they have really thought about this content. And I'm just like, these are good books. These are good books and good messages that I want to give my kids. So I saw the books and I was like, whoa, I need to get myself on this train. So thank you again to Hobby Hobby for sponsoring this video. We love their books. And if you want to check them out, there is a link in this video in the description below. I will share a lot more book resources for talking to your child about emotions and helping them to gain that self-awareness. As our preschool unit comes out here in the next couple weeks, my body inside and out. All right, strategy number four for how to teach your baby about emotional intelligence, about big feelings, and how to recognize all of these emotions inside of them is narrate. You want to narrate your own feelings with your child, both positive and negative. Similarly to when we read them in books, by narrating your own emotions, it helps your child to recognize that you feel a wide range of emotions in the same way that they do. It helps them to recognize that they're not alone in these big feelings, that it's totally normal. Now, it doesn't always have to be natural moments like when you're actually really mad about something, you are likely not going to stop and think, oh, this is a great moment for me to model for my child what it looks like to be mad. But you can set up some moments where you show what it might be like for you to experience some of those big emotions. Even though it feels kind of silly, narration is a live model with their most iconic, important person as the leading role. That is so powerful for your child. Nice. Are you building a house? I am building. Oh no, that made me feel sad. I worked so hard on that, Ainsley. Ainsley. I want to help you to fix it. Thank you, Ainsley, I appreciate that. That's right, you build it, break it. you break it. But again, it's not just negative emotions. Share those positive ones too. When your child gives you a hug or spontaneously does something that makes you feel loved, Say it out loud to them. In whatever opportunities you can, you being the model, you narrating what you're feeling is going to make a huge, huge impact. And finally, number five in our ways to help your baby to develop that emotional intelligence, to learn about big feelings and navigate those emotions is support your child. Support your child by providing them with some tools to help them understand these big emotions and what they feel like within themselves. We created a calming corner for them in their room. Everything from a soft, relaxing place to come to, to some visuals modeling what those emotions might look or feel like, and then even some tools as we start diving into the self-regulation portion of emotional intelligence. All of that we will go into in depth in our next video that really looks fully at the calming corner that we put together for our kids. But if you have that space in your house, somewhere that can be a safe go-to spot that has physical tools for your child to help identify and then later re regulate those emotions, that's gonna make a huge, huge difference in developing especially that self-awareness portion of emotional intelligence. Okay. That's the five things. Those are the five strategies to help your child to develop that emotional intelligence, identify those big feelings, and start to really help them understand those emotions. Now, I have to tell you, when I first wrote the scope of this whole vlog, it was a monster. Like, every resource I could possibly have on emotional intelligence was in this one vlog. It's just not possible. So that's why today we, we focused on self-awareness. And then this coming Thursday, we're gonna go deep into our calming corner. We've got a whole thing on handling 
tantrums. And, and, and how all of this self-awareness and vocabulary and, and all these things play into tantrums. How all feelings are okay, but not all behaviors are okay. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Oh, and then our whole preschool unit on my body inside and out. Yeah, there's like so much to it. And there's so much great stuff to come in the coming weeks. So again, if you are not a part of our extended family here on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe down below. We would have to love you. We would have to love you. We wouldn't have to love you, but we would love you regardless. But we would love to have you here on our channel either way. And and honestly, focusing on developing this emotional intelligence for our children has been such a blessing. So difficult. So difficult to retrain myself as a parent, but so rewarding. Maybe this doesn't come naturally to you. Like, it doesn't come naturally to me. If you're in that journey with us, know that you're not alone, know that it does get easier, and know that we've seen the fruits of making these small changes for ourselves and for our children. And I wouldn't do anything different except do it sooner. That is all. I love the phrase, you do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, you do better. And that's what I feel like I was called to do here when I knew better and I knew better about how to support my kids in their emotional intelligence. I had to, I just, had to for their sake and for ours. So I will leave that thought with you here today. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up right there. I need, I need to stop talking. And so thank you for joining us and we will see you again next time. Bye.